Welcome to World Box. My name is Gorg, and today I'm going to show you how to make your worlds look better and more realistic, which is better. I know it's pretty easy to just have the game generate a world for you, or just download maps online and use that and just never even make your own world. You're lazy and you're stupid. But sometimes you want something very specific, and you try making it yourself. So you take the nice big circle. And you go, wow, look at that island, it's so cool. And then you go, wow, look at this, that's so cool. And then you're thinking, this looks like butt. This literally looks like a butt. So you just keep working on it, and you think, what's wrong with me? Why can't I make a good map? Why do my maps look like garbage all the time? Well, you came to the right place. Because I'm going to teach you how to make some nice looking maps. It's actually pretty simple. There's a couple little tricks that you can do to help your maps look a lot better. First things first, let's start with one maybe main landmass. Let's do top of the map. Top of the map to ya laddies. So what I like to do is start with sand. It's funny because this is going to sound a lot like an art tutorial with the way I'm going to talk about this because it's a lot of like art techniques, like painting almost. But I'm garbage at actual art, so it's a little bit ironic, and it feels weird making this tutorial. What am I saying? I had no talent. But what you're going to want to do is accent the edges and start with the outlines. So let's say, like that. And then you want to follow along the line, leaving the beach. And don't worry too hard about the lines. It almost works better if you kind of like screw it up in spots where you've got, you know, a thick part right here and a skinny part and variety because if you make it look too perfect then it looks cheap and unrealistic let's just fill in the landmass here let's make sure we put some forest i don't know when that happened but that's not supposed to be there perfect so here's the little trick that's going to help you a ton the vortex tool wow grab the vortex tool and grab one of these brushes you're going to want to go small typically maybe not that small but like pretty small actually let's go let's go let's go middle and you're going to want to gently tap. Just really brief taps. And you're going to want to follow the edge. Now, the longer you hold it, obviously, the more it's going to scramble it. So, you know, use it at your own discretion. But the point is, like, that's too much, right? You got holes in the beach. You don't want that. Once you've got kind of a mixed up look, you can correct if you want. I like to kind of just redraw the actual beach lines because you'll get these, like, weird kind of sand things that I don't really like. You get these holes in the sand. So I like to just kind of correct those. The beaches can kind of look smooth because that's how actual beaches look. You know, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty consistent. Um, but what looks nice is the dirt edge. Let's separate the plain soil from the forest soil with a little bit of a mountain range. So I'm going to start with almost the smallest brush, but not quite. And we're going to kind of give it this uh, kind of mountainous shape here right and just the same way we did with the beach you want to do a kind of an outline on the middle leaving a little bit of an edge of just hill like that right what you're going to want to do next is don't stop there maybe a mountain that comes through here and maybe some sort of mountain right here the trick is just to make shapes that just kind of feel random but aren't keep the hill outline keep the mountain in the middle but you're not done yet. What you're going to want to do next is go to temperature and you're going to want to snow cap some of these. Sometimes for the snow, I'll do just the single square brush, just do single squares, but it takes forever, but you can get exactly what you want out of that. And then here's the trick for this one. I just want a, just a millionth of a second, just like that. Boom. So it looks less like I made it. It actually kind of closed this off. It's just a hill. They can still cross over it. But you see how much better that looks? Because I'm kind of a perfectionist in the sense that in my head, I wanted all the snow to connect all the way through. But it gives it much more depth if there's actually some gaps in the snow. And it makes it so there's multiple peaks on this mountain instead of just one completely uniform up and down. So that's a decent looking landmass. But this is very basic still. We want to do one more thing before we go on to the next step. And that is patches of things. So for this, we don't want just a gigantic forest and a gigantic plain, right? That's gonna look pretty lame once we add stuff to it. So let's go like this, let's go like this, and then let's do vice versa. Let's go like this, and maybe like a little patch right here. And now since I use that brush, you don't really need to vortex this if you don't want to. Usually it looks pretty all right as is, but if you're feeling frisky, you can kinda give it the wiggles. 
because sometimes it looks good having the gaps in it like that, but not just single dot gaps. You kind of want like big gaps. So I'll just run it along the edge. There, if there's any shapes you don't like, get rid of them. But so far it's looking pretty good. Let's give a little bit more of this up here because it looks kind of lame. There we go. Being careful not to click on my mountain there. Feeling pretty good about that. All right, so before we put in the biomes and the actual land plants, let's do some little rivers. Um, there's two ways I like to do this. I'll actually show you both of them. One of them is you start with close ocean. Let's pick a little spot for, a, say, a little lake. Then let's run this through the mountains. But once we get close to the ocean, we switch to the single. You wanna make sure it connects all the way through. If you move too quick, sometimes you'll get these corners that don't actually connect. So make sure you don't do that like that. You see that? So you might have to run up and down it a couple times. Try to think like a river, you know? You don't want it to be too uniform, but you don't want it to be too chaotic. And then if you like erosion, you like the sand, I personally like it, so I'll leave it on so you get this little sand effect in here. Looks nice. Secondly, there's a couple things I would also do, and that is to run a couple teeny rivers not to a lake. It's tempting to always have a lake, but you don't gotta do that. It's actually okay to just have some rivers that just kind of go off map. So let me show you. I'll start with close ocean, like this, and then somewhere in the middle I'll switch to shallow waters to make them kind of feel more like a creek. There, you see that? Looks kind of nice, don't it? Let's actually run a couple more small rivers out of this guy into a nice shallow little kind of a beach pond. Sometimes what I'll do when I'm feeling like being kind of an overachiever is I'll fill in a lake with uh, shallow water and then I'll kind of give it like a close ocean kind of deeper water and in the middle. It definitely makes it look a little more, uh, you know, like the sh beaches are shallow and then it gets deeper. I like to pretty much cut off my rivers right when they hit the ocean too. I feel like it looks kind of cheap if you have the water run into the ocean. So that's how I would make my landscape, right? It looks better than if I just kind of dropped a bunch of nonsense in there. It looks a little bit more, I don't know, scenic. It looks a little more realistic. So here's what we do next. The fun part, I think, and the easy part is dropping in the biomes. Don't do any plants or anything until you have figured out where the biomes are going to go just for simplicity's sake. I love all the new biomes because it gives you a lot more options of what kind of areas you want to be what. Like this lush, rivery, moist area makes me think of an area that mushrooms would grow, right? It, very, it feels very much like a rich landscape. We can now turn off biome overgrowth because we have the best plan and I don't want them doing their own thing. So there we go. It's a little patch over there. We'll put plants in there in a second. This over here feels very much like a savanna to me with this kind of watering hole thing. So let's put this right up against the mountain kind of zigzagging as we go along. Again, you don't want a vortex at this point because you'll scramble your existing landscape. So make sure that your landscape is properly scrambled and looks how you want before you add the biomes and rivers because if I was to say, hey, I don't really like this edge, let me scramble this, it would run my little rivers here. In fact, would you look at that? My river is actually already ruined. There we go. Okay, so I like how that looks. I want to transition from savanna to mushroom. I don't want it to go straight from savanna into mushroom. I also don't want to make half my map savanna because I don't really care too much for savanna. What would be a good transition biome from savanna to mushroom? Well, I'm glad you asked because in my eyes, enchanted works pretty well because it's a nice light color and it feels like a good way to transition from like savanna, kind of boring, to like fantasy land. So let's put a little enchanted patch over here. You can even just match up biomes like this based on their color, which is kind of what I'm doing here, where this is kind of like a light yellow, so I'm doing a light green to transition it to a dark green. It's also fill in mushroom a little bit better here like that. Now we have this whole area here. For me, this is going to be a little simple. I'm basically going to just roughly follow the forest section with jungle. Not being too concerned about the edges of the forest, it's okay if we go over. In fact, I'm going to connect that area right there. So there you go. We got a nice variety to it. The only thing that I would like to change just from looking at it now is that I kind of like the idea of following this in. I didn't like how it was a perfectly straight line like that. And I liked the idea of following uh, the planes there. So there we go. That looks a little bit better. Keep yourself away from straight lines is a good rule of thumb. Straight lines are bad. Okay, now we can do plants. This one, I like to keep it pretty general. You can get as fancy as you want. You could have little spots that don't have any plants, spots that have more plants, but I'm a simple man. I like to just coat the whole thing a little bit, you know, because it looks kind of nice. And then I got to coat the whole thing again 
with trees. Now, if there was an undo button, I would say, oh, here's the, another thing you can do, but instead, I'll just backtrack, because I want to express that this looks pretty good, right? You don't gotta overthink it. I don't want you to think that making your own maps has to take you the entire day. It really doesn't. It can take you like 10 minutes. If you want it to take more time and get extra detail, something I like to do is, you could even start by placing all the plants like this and then just decide which areas you don't really want. This plane right here. We have the jungle full of trees. We don't really need as many trees in here. So let's go ahead and clear out trees. Let's say that maybe this beachfront savanna is not as busy, not so bad. Maybe we'll cut some of these trees along the coast here down. And then since I just basically eliminated all the trees, I don't want there to be no trees, but now we can kind of go in with the single place and place a few. Bada bing, bada boom. That looks pretty good. You have a perfectly good, nicely detailed map. You could put one race over here, one race over here, and see what they do. At this point, you can go for resources. You could say, oh, there's lots of bushes in the grasslands and lots of bushes in Enchanted, whatever. Maybe some in the mushrooms. I like to put the rocks along the edges of the mountains because I like to keep things sensible. And yeah, that's pretty much how I would do it. Nothing too crazy. You can get as crazy as you want with this. Sometimes you'll just keep adding on to it like it's a painting. Like for instance, right here, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know what would look real nice? Is a little river that kind of cuts through here. There we go. That's real nice. That's real nice. And if you want to get crazy, you can also manually spawn animals and do whatever you want there. But that's the gist of it. I hope this helped you out. I hope you learned something. I by no means am an expert at making maps. There's people that have made some amazing maps I've downloaded where I'm just like, wow, I would never have thought to do that. Or how did they make this look so good? Uh, this is just a quick way to make a basic landmass look a lot better. And I hope that helps. I'll do a, just a really quick one for you. Just kind of a recap. Let's make a small island off the coast here of the enchanted biome. Start with the nice kind of sand edge. Then you can fill it in however you want, following along the inner line of the sand. It's a great time for you to put in if you want forest or plains. You wanna keep it kinda of messy so it doesn't look like your mom helped you make it. You can always put some mountains in there if you'd like. Always kind of a nice thing. Gives it some depth. There you go, making the mountains nice and cool. I'm gonna scramble all this at once, so if you're wondering why I'm kind of not doing that yet, I'm gonna kinda of add the patches that I want, like that. Then, I'm gonna go kind of a big one on here, very briefly scramble. If you feel so inclined, you can fix the beaches in any spots that you didn't really like how they turned out. Maybe even make a big beach, but keeping it still pretty messy. Then you can add in your biomes. We're gonna make this entirely jungle. Well, I said entirely jungle, but what I actually meant was swamp jungle. Some plants, bunch of trees, boom, there you go. Nice little swamp island across the coast. And this is kind of a bonus tip, but if you wanna make good use out of the swamp biome it pairs extremely well with the jungle biome like i just did obviously if you make an area entirely swamp no one can go across it because it's water but if you mix it in not only does it look really nice but people can still find little pathways through it on the jungle so there you have it there's a little quick little map for you i hope you enjoyed if you want me to do any more videos like this or even just if you just like watching me make maps i love doing this it's like art to me which again, I'm horrible at usually. So, and if you have any tips for me, any little tricks that you like to do to make your maps look cooler, uh, hit me up. I'm always looking for ways to improve my map making. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Make sure to subscribe.